station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? And station's ready for the event. Houston Chronicle, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Andrea Leinfelder of the Houston Chronicle. How do you hear me? How do you hear me? Uh, morning, Andrea. I've got you loud and clear. Awesome. Thank you so much for being available today. Um, so this is your first mission in space. I want to hear how it's been going and how to compare what you expected it to be. Well, it's been, uh, it's been going great. I mean, you really can't uh, put into words how fun it is. Uh, and, yeah, it definitely meets and exceeds all my expectations. Um, I think, you know, it's uh, every day has been a different day. There's just so much uh, new things in terms of whether it's science, uh, new maintenance work to be done, uh, prepping for spacewalks. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's been uh, everything I wished it could be and, and definitely more. And I think the the thing I was least expecting um, was, you know, how fun it is just to be with the people up here. And so it's, it's kind of like a second family. And so that's also been a, a joy. And, you know, working with the, the team, as you all know, uh, being a, a Houstonian, uh, you know, the folks at Mission Control are the ones who do most of the work and we just get uh, the, the credit up here. Um, but, you know, getting to work with them and seeing the teams, you know, down there 24-7, uh, keeping the station running and keeping us going is, is pretty cool to be able to work with all of them as well. What's been the most difficult thing to adapt to in microgravity? Is it like brushing your teeth, eating, um, just, you know, trying to sleep? What's been, what's been the most difficult thing that you maybe didn't expect? I think I, I would group it into two categories. There's like the physical, which is early on, and then just sort of the mental, which is ongoing. So the physical part between, takes between about two days to a few weeks. And, you know, just the, the, you know, the feeling of falling and getting used to that and then your brain eventually adapting and then just sort of orienting your, you know, your eyes and your ears and all your senses, getting used to what's going on. And again, your brain sort of eventually adapting to all that. And then I think on the mental side, the hard, the most difficult thing is um, you take for granted how, how much gravity helps organize things. And so it's really uh, a lot more difficult up here to multitask. You know, it's little things, you know, you mentioned brushing your teeth. It's a great example of, you know, you put the toothpaste on on, and then if you don't immediately put the toothpaste back uh, in the little pocket where it came from, uh, you're going to lose that toothpaste and it'll be gone um, because you get used, so used to on the ground just setting something down, moving off and doing another task. Uh, you know, maybe if you're brushing your teeth at home, maybe you're looking at your phone uh, and the toothpaste tube is still there when you look back. But here, that's definitely not the case. And so you have to be very, um, very deliberate uh, and very mentally aware of doing one thing at a time. So whether that's eating, working, um, reading a book and not losing your book, uh, everything, uh, basically, you have to make sure you're you're paying attention to that one thing uh, so you don't lose a screwdriver, lose a pencil, lose a tube of toothpaste or lose whatever it is that you're holding on to. I guess everyone up there has to be uh, put the lid back on the toothpaste when you're done with it. I guess there's no debate on that one. <laughs> um, and so what's been your favorite memory so far, your favorite moment, um, something that when you come back home, you'll, you'll look back on fondly? Um, so, yeah, I've got a, a few, uh, and I hope they all stick in my mind. I think on the launch, probably the uh, in the launch and the docking, the, the most uh, significant thing I think I remember, or two things, really. I know you asked for one, but one was the sight of the, the thrusters firing the Dragon. And so there's forward uh, thrusters that do the larger burns, and in space, you, they actually make this plasma plume. And so seeing that out the forward hatch window and seeing the four, like, you know, plumes go into space was it was breathtaking, and then also about 40 kilometers away from the station when we were starting to rendezvous, uh, the sunlight was just right that we actually picked up the station visually a lot earlier than we normally would have, and it was backlit by the sun and it looked like pure gold, like just black light, and then this golden space station, which was really neat, knowing that's the place we we're going to live. Um, I think here on board, uh, the most visually uh, you know, memorable thing that I, I get to see on a regular basis is the cupola uh, and just looking out the window. And, and when I sit in the cupola, I like to flip so that my bottom is down towards the earth and my feet are going along the way that the station is going. So it feels like you're sort of sitting uh, basically in a spaceship flying over the top of the earth. And uh, that's something, you know, that's just uh, I, I love to do that in the evenings, uh, just to relax and whenever I have free time. And that's definitely something I'll, I'll remember the rest of my life. Um, and so tell me a little bit about the experiments you're participating in and, and something that's been particularly interesting for you. 
Yeah, so that's uh, actually one of the other surprising things. It's, it's hard to keep track of all of them. So they we're doing 300 different experiments in the time we're up here, which is more than one a day. Uh, and so, and most of these experiments are some scientists' life, work, and passion, and has the potential to change lives on the ground. So trying to keep track of all those has been uh, has been a lot of hard work, but it's a lot of fun too to get to interact uh, and be a part of that. So some of the we're doing a whole lot of plant research right now. That we have actually three different ones uh, in progress, and so that's been a lot of fun. One is looking at how, nutri how to deliver nutrients and water to, to plants in microgravity. And so we, can now, we know we can grow plants in space, and now we're looking at more efficient ways to do that to make it more scalable and sustainable, especially as we look to go to the moon and stay there, look to go to Mars and have to grow our own food. Uh, there's another experiment looking at, it's essentially growing stem cell cultures of cotton plants to, to look at variations that might make them more drought resistant or use less water. Uh, another experiment related to plants that's looking at how they respond at a genetic level to different levels of gravity. And so it's essentially in a centrifuge that can, that can change to be Martian gravity, lunar gravity, uh, Earth gravity, no gravity, uh, and look at how they respond to that. And then the other one that's interesting to me is a whole lot of materials science uh, experiments going on. One in particular just happening this past week is concrete, uh, different types of concrete mixing and, and trying to figure out uh, better ways to model that on the ground. It was that helps uh, when you when concrete hardens on the ground, it gives off a lot of carbon. So if we can figure out a better way to do that, we would we would reduce the carbon emissions. And then we also have a vested interest in it uh, in Houston because if we're going to go to the moon and stay, we have to be able to build structures on these other uh, planets and other surfaces. And so figuring out what to do or how to best mix concrete or structure structural material is the other reason we're doing that. So it's pretty pretty cool work. And as you can imagine, you know, concrete on Earth. Uh, you know, the, the water and the mix settles because of gravity, and in, in uh, zero or microgravity here, that doesn't happen. So we're studying that uh, and, and a lot of other similar things that are, when we look at material science world, where gravity changes how things behave on Earth, and so we can come up with new alloys, new materials. Uh, so that's all really ex cool, exciting stuff that uh, I really enjoy being a part of up here. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, also, you know, today's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Are there any celebrations on this station? Well, I'm wearing my red shirt. Uh, the other thing I'd say uh, what we have been doing is over the last few days, uh, Kayla's actually been leading the charge. She was looking for all the heart-shaped lakes uh, we could find and ponds. And it turns out there's actually a lot of heart-shaped little pieces of land or uh, lakes. Uh, it's actually a little harder to photograph them, though. Uh, so that's been one thing we've been doing. And I think uh, all of us over the last few days have been trying to you know, get pictures of home areas. We've had several passes over the U.S. the last uh, week or two during the day. So trying to find uh, pictures of home and places where we have loved ones around the country uh, on days where there's not clouds and we happen to be over them has been a, a recent uh, thing we've been doing a lot of as Valentine's Day has been approaching. Yeah, and um, on National South Day, you posted on Twitter that you're growing a lettuce bouquet okay, um, for your wife. And, you know, you, you mentioned that spouses have the harder job while astronauts are in space. So I'm curious, did you do anything for your wife back home on Valentine's Day? Or are you talking to her at all today? Are you talking to her at all today? I, I have not talked to her yet. I talked to her last night and wished her an early happy Valentine's Day, and I will talk to her again today. And then, yeah, the, the folks, uh, obviously, I can't deliver anything in person, and it's hard to order something off online to have delivered. But we have a great support team at Johnson Space Center, uh, and so people who do uh, who help take support, care of our families while we're gone as well. And so, yeah, I have arranged for her to have have a special delivery today, but uh, I'd obviously like to be there in person um, or have them come here. That'd be the best gift. Uh, but uh, in light of, in, you know, can't do that, but we have the next best thing of a lot of support on the ground to help our families uh, while we're gone. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you so much for all your time today. Um, hopefully, we'll get to meet when you get back on Earth and talk more about your experiences in space, but enjoy the rest of your time up there. Well, I do. Appreciate it, Andrea. And uh, thanks to all the folks of Houston. Enjoy your happy Valentine's Day down there as well. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from the Houston Chronicle. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.